and welcome to the very first class of Women's History with Alice in Danger. I'm your professor. Schools are starting back up all around the country, and you know what? We're going to start class right here. Thank you for joining us. I have two very, very special guest speakers in class today, and I want to welcome the incomparable Allison Kay and Marty Bell. Ladies, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having us. We're really excited to be here today. Yay! Ditto. <laughs> That's what I was going to say, so. Same. Oh, wonderful. How are you guys doing with this quarantine and pandemic and heat and everything going on? As good as we can, I guess. I mean, we're in two different states, so I guess I can't speak for both of us, but um, Michigan's still mostly shut down, but I'm surviving. That's all you can do right now, right? I'm in Missouri, and uh, there are parts of Missouri where you wouldn't think that there was a pandemic going on, but thankfully I am healthy, I'm safe, and haven't died of boredom yet, so I guess, I guess I'm on the right track. So speaking of boredom, have you guys started any new quarantine hobbies? Ooh, I actually built a patio in my backyard like a week or two ago. Um, like, yeah, like paver stones, like dug up the grass and everything. I have my garden going in the backyard. Discovering new skills. What? Was that you that grew a watermelon recently? Yes, it's a baby That's watermelon it. still, but it's growing. So proud, so proud. They grow up so fast. Being nurtured and loved. Proud moms. Um, I realized that I'm actually, I, I kind of have known for a little bit that I was, I was, decent cook but I realized like I'm really good <laughs> you guys I'm like really good I realized I, I and I really do enjoy it. it's a great uh like stress reliever and I was doing really really well on my Duolingo uh, learning Portuguese I have like a hundred something day streak and then I broke it no I'm doing German and I'm like 218 days in and every day I'm like I can't screw this up today I can't screw this up it was so much pressure it was it was I was like okay all right like 104th 105th 106th and then I was just it was just stressing me out so I was like I'm done so I'm like I'm going I'm slowly trying to get back into it uh but that that's the extent of what I realized that I'm decent at over the next over the last few weeks or months I guess Having the streak was giving you too much pressure. It was. <laughs> it really was because it would it would message you like, "Hey, a hundred fourth streak day is impressive. You can't look. Don't, don't break it." Yes, and it was just the little owl was stressing me out, man. I finally was just like, "All right, I, I can't." Let <laughs> down the owl. <laughs> I felt horrible, and I I used up all my uh, my uh, streak freezes. So I don't know. There were just too many languages floating around in my head. So taking a little break, but I'll be back. Well, how many languages are you up to now? Uh, I'm fluent in two. Uh, I can get by in four, I guess. That's impressive. Yeah, I'm working on it. That's nice. Yeah, I'm trying to learn German and oh my gosh, to be in your 40s and trying to learn a new language and having the Swiss cheese brain that I have, it's almost impossible. And I'm like, ich bin eine Frau and stuff like that. And my husband would be like, that's, I asked you what you want for dinner. And I'll be like, Essen. And then I'll just bat my eyelashes at him and try to distract him. <laughs> I think German's also a really tough language and it's also hard when you're speaking to a native speaker because yes. your husband speaks German fluently, right? He speaks two forms. He speaks Swiss German and High German. It's kind of like Portuguese and Spanish. They're similar, but they're not the same. So, so you're speaking to a native speaker. So it's a little, it's a little more pressure on that, but yeah. That's good. You also have somebody to practice with. I think that's what I'm missing is I'm missing somebody to practice with. So mm -hmm. it, pronunciation and things like that are difficult when you don't know if you're saying it correctly. Right. Yeah. For yeah. some reason, even though Marty and I are so close, I get nervous speaking Spanish in front of her because she's a native speaker, even though I do understand a lot of Spanish and I speak pretty well, but I get nervous if I talk to her or her mom. And I know you don't expect me to sound perfect, but I still just get, it's just that nerve. I don't know. And it's I, like I teaching was, Allison Dominican <laughs> slang. That's my new favorite. That's all. That's one of my favorite new quarantine things is teaching a uh, Dominican slang. What? Yeah, that's a whole other world as well. I was doing Japanese on Duolingo, but that that's one of those languages where if you stop for one day, everything is gone. Yeah. <laughs> You've lost everything. Yeah. Oh, I remember trying to use the little bit of Japanese I had to get around the first time I was over there in uh, 2003. And I'm just like, okay, say this, bow. Make sure I say it like this, bow. Don't leave my chopsticks in the rice. And I just ended up finding an internet cafe that just kept bringing me Coke. And 
I just stayed out there and just talked to anybody at home because the first time I went to Japan, I went by myself. I was the yeah. only uh, I was the only foreigner there for two days, and I was only there for I think wow. six days total. Yeah, yeah. as long as you learn a handful least. of phrases, you're good. You learn the handful of what to say, and then you can pretty much survive. Usually, I mean, if you show that you're trying to learn, if you even try to speak another person's language, usually they're very um, appreciative of it. Yeah. Unless it's the French. <laughs> I was telling no, this, I was telling this story. The languages the and I'm like, uh, on. Oh, I was saying this the other day to uh, some friends. I'm like, when we would, every summer we go to this place in Germany called Europa Park. And it's like this kind of Disney ripoff, but it's an amazing amusement park, right? And I can't ride rides. So I just know where the internet and all the coffees are. And so I'll be holding everybody's bags. People are on rides. I'll go get my coffee and I'll always order in German and whatnot. Cause I, I practice while I'm in line. I get pretty comfortable. And it's so cute. Cause as soon as the Germans hear me speaking, they want to switch to English cause they want to practice, but yeah. then we'll go in a certain parts and it'll be a French speaker. So I'll try to ask for coffee in French and they hear that I'm struggling. They're like, nah, bring nope. it, bring it all the French. You need help? Pfft, no. And they do that thing at me like the French Canadians do. And I'm like, man, the French are tough. Tough crowd. At that point, I don't tell them I'm Canadian because then they're going to assume I'm like a Quebecer. Oh, or no, it really start about. spitting it at you. Oh, you we know, we're just talking about Quebec. <laughs> Um, when you try to speak a language and people realize you're struggling, they'll just switch and try to, like, we just went to a Mexican restaurant, um, in Southwest Detroit where the majority of the people do speak Spanish, um, like all the waitresses. So I'll just order in Spanish. But the second I pause, she thinks I'm struggling. So she'll switch and try to say it in English. And like, her English isn't great either. So I'm like, damn, is my Spanish that bad? But really she just probably wants to practice. She feels less pressure because we also speak Spanish. (laughs) Oh, that's sweet. So, all right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna get into the bulk of today's lesson. What I would like to learn from you ladies is who are the women who've inspired and impacted your careers? And I mean, let's get in deep, let's talk about them. Marty, we're gonna start with you first. Tell us about the women. Yeah, all the pressure on Marty. Uh, Okay, hey guys. Um, So actually, AK and I were talking about this beforehand and it doesn't necessarily have to be just in wrestling, right? Like we're talking about just women in general. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think for me, anybody who knows me knows that uh, this, my grandmother was a big part of of my life. My grandmother raised me from the time I was seven. I moved out of her house when I was uh, 18. And uh, you know, she was already 70 years old when she, when she took me in. Yeah. So she did not need to be raising uh, no little girl. And uh, she was always extremely supportive of absolutely everything I did, even when she didn't understand it. My grandmother, uh, we lived in a Dominican neighborhood in New York called Inwood slash Dykeman uh, slash Uptown. There's many names for it. The technical name is Inwood, uh, but most people call it Dykeman because that's like the main street that's in that neighborhood. And it's a Dominican neighborhood. My grandmother had her church, her bank, her grocery store, her hospital, everything in that area. So my grandmother never had to learn English, Uh, but she really just... She taught me to believe in myself. She taught me like, even when there was one there. So I went to acting school. I'm to, I, I'm, I, we've talked about me not being able to keep things brief, but uh, I went to acting school and every time I would come home uh, to visit her, she'd be like, hey, when are you gonna be on TV? And I'd be like, I, I don't know, whatever. Like, I, I have no idea. And every single time I would come visit her, that's the first thing she would say to me is when are you gonna be on TV? To the point where I started getting like frustrated because I'm like, literally in my first year of school, haven't even started auditioning. Like what, like, what is your deal? Why are, why are you pressuring me so much about this? But it took me a while to understand that in her mind, I was already a star. So why wasn't I on television type of thing? Like that's, that's how I think that she saw it. Um, unfortunately, by the time that I was on television uh, with Impact Wrestling, uh, my grandmother had Alzheimer's. And so she didn't really understand, uh, didn't really like, I, yeah, she just really didn't understand that that was me that was on television. So she never really got to see me be on TV uh, like she always wanted. But it was something that I think I've always kind of carried with me. Uh, I, I would definitely say that that's probably the most influential person in my career. I'm sure I'm gonna let Allison talk because I'm sure uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll get more into uh, in terms of wrestling who impacted my career 
and things like that. But I would say that that's probably my first. Well, you and I have a parallel because I moved in with my grandmother when I was eight years old. And I was with my grandmother till I was 19 and she passed wow. away in my arms. Wow. I was in the hospital bed holding her. She had had a stroke while I was driving her on her Avon route. But uh, she didn't make it. We lost her the day after. And, and she never saw me move on to be a wrestler. But at that point, Steve was moving up and she was, she was proud of Steve. So she got to see that. And, uh, but yeah, I, I knew your grandmother was a big influence on you, but I didn't realize like a little bit of parallels we had. Yeah, that's rocking. crazy. Yeah, but huh. that's... <sighs> Yeah. yeah, grandmothers are awesome. Woo! Mine was mean. Right, well, Mine was mean. Oh my gosh. Mine was too. He would stand he on a chair to smack us with a wooden spoon. Oh my God. Did we have the same grandmother? I don't know. Mine I was think, Canadian. I think all three of us had the same grandmother actually. Cause I, that's specifically the, the utensil that I remember is a wooden spoon. <laughs> so my, my grandmother's was a wooden back scratcher, but it looked like a, it looked like a fork, but it was a back scratcher. That was like <sighs> her, her we used to call her tablita. That was her tablita. Oh my gosh. I, is that like the grandmother starter kit? It's like, yeah. here's, your, here's your baby, here's your baby grandchild, and here's your grandma starter kit. And it's like something wooden to hit the kid with when they get older. And then a house coat. A bunch of like a house coat and some butterscotch candies that are yeah. slippers. Yes, slippers. Or my grandma, well, one of my grandmas always had um, those strawberry candies. Yes. Oh, that I, that, the, that's on the me. They were top. like, where did these come from? Like, they just appear in grandmother's yep. candy dishes. I don't know. I think they sell them at the dollar store, actually, like Dollar Tree. I, I, think I it's found a Christmas thing. Is it? I see them at Christmas a lot. I mean, that makes sense. They're like red with like green on top. So that makes sense. But yeah, it's I mean. Strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a Oh my god. I'm gonna what find those candies candy. and the next time we're all at Shimmer together, I'm be like, look what I got for you guys. It's candies. No, those candies were low key so good. Yes. Like I always be like, like butterscotch, all that stuff I didn't like, but those strawberry candies were good. Yes. Mm, oh my god, yeah. it was and they had a little like filling inside, but it was yeah. like yes. a bite and then it was gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Allison, I'm gonna pose the same question to you. Let's talk about women who influenced you in out of wrestling. So um, I'm going to go right into wrestling because I do have like similar stories with where my grandmothers, I feel like were very influential. My mother was very influential. She's very tough. A lot of my attitude comes from her. I see I Marty Nottie and she already knows. I, I don't, I don't want to cut you off, but man, <laughs> I love Allison's mom. Like sitting at a dinner table with Allison and her siblings and your mom, your mom just making these little side comments. And I'm just looking at her and I'm like, is this like Allison? Like, <laughs> she's so quiet she's quiet but she will just like she's just sitting and observing and she'll just throw things out out of nowhere and you're like where did that even come from but she's very like she's calm she's dry but she will like roast you too she would like my childhood friends my mom was always so quiet and then out of nowhere she would like not yell at my friends but she would just say something where everyone was always like I'm afraid of your mom even though my mom never yelled she never like was aggressive but they were just afraid of her because she just had that like aura about her but anyway Moving right into wrestling, I feel like this question is still layered because I feel like there are women who influenced me as a child when I was watching wrestling, you know, when I was 12 years old, the peak of my crazy fandom with posters all over the wall, you know, that was like attitude era for me. And then there are the women who influenced me as I became a part of pro wrestling, as I started to actually learn the ins and outs of pro wrestling. And then there are also women who impacted me personally in real life um, as I became a wrestler. So... I guess we should start from the beginning. So like yeah. when I was 12 and I was an attitude era baby. So like automatically it's like, yeah, Lita, you know, China, like that, those are the women who I felt like were very influential, but it was, it was the women who, um, I felt were like mixing it up with the guys. Now that I look back on it, I realized those were the women that I was most drawn to. It wasn't like the ones who I thought were like, I don't want to say the prettiest because I think they're all pretty, but you know what I mean? It wasn't mm -hmm. just like off looks. It was the girls who were holding their own and doing things that the other girls weren't doing. Yeah. I uh, remember joining I, on this. <laughs> well, I broke in around, um, I broke in around the time that Lita was starting to pick up steam. She, I saw her at ECW's Miss Congeniality, saw her move on. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember her from them and I remember watching from backstage and seeing this girl with this 
big old shoulder tattoo and she's doing this stuff off the ropes. And at that point, I wasn't quite into wrestling yet. I broke in right around about six months before ECW went under. And I remember looking at my brother, I'm like, yo, who's this chick? And when I came in in 2000 and Lita was starting to pick up steam, so many of us like tried to kind of cop that style. You know, uh-huh. the baggy pants, the thong hanging out, you know, a lot of the girls I'm working with, like they didn't know how to lock up, but they knew how to do a Rana off the top. And mm-hmm. so, you yeah. She, manager move set, you know, yes. you're a LA, so you just need to know how to jump on the guys and they guide you and they do the rest of it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Tuck your chin and go. <laughs> so. Yes. But, uh, There's that, like pretty much the girls from the late 90s to the early 2000s, like 2002, 2003 ish, those were the ones who I felt like were most impacting me as a child because I didn't know anything else existed. I was like 12 years old. Um, I knew WWE, I actually started watching WCW first, but that was like when I started watching, the, the majority of the girls were like the Nitro girls. You know, they weren't really, I don't remember seeing a lot of women's matches in WCW at the time that I was watching. And we quickly moved over to WWF. And, you know, we were switching back and forth the channels during the Monday Night Wars. So, like, I got to experience that peak insanity as a child, which made it even more crazy, you know. Um, but I feel like um, those were the women that, they were the first ones that stood out, you know. Um, and then it, it changed. It's funny to look back on some matches, you know, when, once I started training. And then I look back on the people that I uh, was obsessed with as, when I was 12. And you look at it a little differently, you know, like then as a, as a worker, I look back and I'm like, damn, Molly Holly was, was good. That's you know, girl. Yep. Molly Holly, Jacqueline jazz, like all those girls, like they had the, all the fundamentals really like down pat. And I feel like they didn't get as much attention as the other girls who like looked a certain way, but those are the ones that I would watch back and, and study more, you know? I think, um, Mickey James and Molly Holly were probably like my number ones when I was a kid, which is so crazy to think of when we've shared locker rooms with these women, you know, like it, it's so crazy. I think because when you're a kid, when you're 12 years old, you know, in middle school and you're watching Mickey James on television and then 15 years later, you're sharing a locker room with her. You're like, wait, what? Like how old were you when you started doing this? Cause I feel like they're not that much older than we are, or at least, uh, you know, perspective wise doesn't feel that way. Um, But yeah, I loved uh, Mickey James. Mickey James was probably one of my favorites. And then, and then I saw Mickey and Mickey was just, she was crazy. And I feel like I, for some reason have always kind of like, you know, gone that way of, I love crazy. I love playing crazy. I love the opportunity to, to be, I'm not going to say be somebody who I'm not, but it, it, it gives you opportunity to do something a little bit more I can get away with a little bit more when I'm in, you know, uh, Marty Bell, the wrestler, obviously, than Marty Bell, the person. So I would definitely say uh, those, those two. And yeah, jazz, like for us, getting the opportunity to work. And I feel like the really cool thing about it, too, is that a lot of these women, we got to work with at WSU. And I'm, mm-hmm. is that, where did we meet you, Danger? Was that, did I meet you at WSU also? I think I only ever did one show for them. And I was brought in for the Cindy Rogers retirement. Okay, I was, that we was were the definitely the only there thing I ever did there. Was um, that 2011? Yes. Because I, that is I, would say, I would say 2011. I there. Yeah. Yeah, Cindy asked me to be her last match, and it was the only time I worked there. Okay. Um, yes. So that's where, I guess that's where we met then. But a lot of these women that we like, kind of idolized, I got to work with or be in the same locker room with at WSU. Um, back when it was at the Ace Arena. Like, I remember the day that it was actually my first show ever at for WSU was March of 2010, I think. Yeah, March 2010 was my first WSU show. And Molly Holly's on the show because it was the Hall of Fame show. And I'm like, okay, like, all right. Uh, You know, I go up to her and I'm like, hi, you know, it is Marty. She's like, hi, I'm Nora. And I'm like, Oh, I know who you are. <laughs> okay, I'm like, uh, it's cool. No, we're just playing. It's fine. It's fine. And I remember at one point, her, um, we were talking about, she want, she still, she had some of her Mighty Molly stuff that she wanted to get rid of and she wasn't sure. And I remember like, I literally looked at her and I was like, she's not sure if people are going to want to buy any of that stuff. And I was like, 
you're Molly Holly. Like, I'm like, <laughs> you understand? And she was just like, well, you know, it's just, it's been so long. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, I almost wanted to be like, uh, I'll buy it. Like, I like, can we just do this right here? So that was, um, that was pretty cool of like meeting her and her being so sweet and her being so humble and just being so like, so chill. And I'm just like, all right, cool. I'm like, yep, this is, this is, this is like, that was my like, all right, we're, we've arrived. Like we're doing this now. So she's one of the few women I've never met in person. And I've got to ask, is she as stunning in person as she is on TV? Oh my because God. She just... I feel like she walked in no makeup. Uh, oh. She had just cut all her hair off. So she oh. had like really cute short hair and just, yeah, just gorgeous. Like a poor little porcelain doll. Oh, I just love her. I, I've never ever once heard a negative thing about her that's she the only time so i've nice. ever i've ever worked with her either i've never i've never seen her again because i know she doesn't really do much with wrestling right. um she hasn't done anything with wrestling in a long time so that was like the only the only time and this was literally i started i had my first match in um november 2008 and this was march 2009 so i was like fresh like oh i had just God. this was like one of my first big opportunities in wrestling uh, was there. And so to walk into the locker room, there were a bunch of knockouts there. And, but just the fact that Molly Holly was there, Don Marie was also there, but yeah, I'm like, Molly Holly's here. Like I'm, I'm, I'm done now. Thank you. This is, it. <laughs> this is my peak. This, this is, is I, I've peaked you guys. So is she like the one female wrestler that just gives you the vapors? Um, She's one of them. Another, yeah. like, I, I feel like, I talk so much about how obsessed I am with Mickey James. It's, I'm surprised I don't, you know what's so funny? So I, I was telling you that I just uh, organized my, my office space here and I didn't mean to do this, but I just remembered that I have this right here at my desk. Um, I'll tell you a super quick story about Mickey James. So I was obsessed with Mickey James. I love Mickey James. Oh, we, uh, we established that. Her. Yeah. Pardon me? <laughs> we established that. Yeah, it's, it's been established, right? I hope she doesn't, like, watch this and, like, put a restraining order on me. But it's fine. Um, so I got, we got to work with her at Impact. Uh, she was on her way out when I was coming in. And it was literally our, I want to say it was, our like, my first day as a contracted wrestler, because I'd done a couple things with them before. But as a contracted wrestler, we're doing, we're starting the dollhouse. And uh, if you guys have ever seen the movie Jawbreaker, that's kind of where the, the inspiration for the Jawbreaker came from. Um, and so we were, we were trying to find jawbreakers. We sent some PAs out. They went and brought back these ginormous jawbreakers. They did not work, but we were looking for. So we're in the back, we're in the makeup area and we're talking about like, yeah, we have to find something. And Mickey James just happens to be there and she goes to her back and she pulls this out. And she's like, uh, would this work? And I'm like, well, it kind of looks like a jawbreaker. I don't know if you guys can see it. I was like, what, what is it? She's like, oh, it's a bouncy ball. I keep in my bag for when I'm bored. And I was like, <laughs> Okay, she's like, do you mind if I have it? Or, or she's like, she's like, here, you can have it. I was like, are you sure? I was like, this is your ball. She's like, no, it's fine. So this is my most, I think it's one of my most like prized wrestling possessions. It's literally just a little bouncy ball that Mickey James gave to me. And this, I don't even think she, I'm, I'm sure if I brought this up to her, she would think I'm insane. Cause probably, it was probably such a small thing to her, but it like, it, it did so much for the dollhouse and it helped us establish ourselves as these like horrible little witches <laughs> thank you <laughs> witches so yeah so my love for mickey james just continued to grow and then i got to wrestle her at an indie show twice two days in a row so much fun just super amazing so my love for mickey james just continues to grow every day Does she i'm texting her after this oh god like i'm literally like off camera grabbing my phone going mickey run Run. I don't think she under, I don't like, I'm, I'm going to be, she's the Trish to my Mickey. Oh, she, did she, did you ever confess your love to her or no? No. I you already have. Oh you just did. Because I feel like, you know, we work with her husband. I feel like it's going to get back to her at some point. <laughs> <laughs> you so might want to win him. She's been, um, like last time she was at, uh, she was at television. She came with, with Donovan, with her son, Donovan, and she was there. And I don't know. She's just, I, oh my god <laughs> no i don't think i've ever told her i feel hey, like Marty. i've been like hey thanks you're great like i really enjoyed working with her so i'm sure that i was like hey you're awesome i appreciate it thank you but um no i don't think uh, until right now that she's gonna know the extent of so marty don't be jealous but i got to kiss her at ring of honor 
I'm just saying. See, I can never kiss her because she's like a mom. She's like. This is well, before no. she was a mom. But no, no, I'm saying she's like, a mo- she's like a mom to me, but she's not because I feel like she's not that much older than me. She's like the cool older sister who doesn't know that I'm around. <laughs> Sending I'm not making this as soon any as I edit this. Oh my, oh my God, I'm leaving all this in. Oh my God, I'm not making Allison, this anyone you're stalking. <laughs> Um, no, not currently. You know what? I feel like anyone that I felt like that about when I was 12, I just, it went away. You know, it's kind of sad. Or like sometimes you meet people that you thought you like idolize and it's just, isn't the same thing. And you're like, Mm -hmm. oh, and it's kind of disappointing. Um, I just, I don't know. Like no, I don't know one that I currently have the vapors for. Um, even like, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm in the business. Maybe that makes a difference too. Cause like, mm. of course there were guys, you know, when I was 12, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love him so much. And then I meet him in real life as an adult and I'm like, ew. Yeah. You know, especially if they try to creep on you, you're like, oh, never mind. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I understand that feeling. And like one of the people that I super had the vapors for, and I, I hope I didn't embarrass myself was uh, Mariko Yoshida. And <laughs> she took really good care of me the first time I was in Japan. And then like, was it last year, the year before she came to Vegas to work on her English and she was hanging out with Melissa who lives in Vegas now. She lives about 20 minutes from me. So I went over to their house and we made this really nice lunch together. And she noticed like my shoulder was giving me problems and, and Yoshida was like, um, takes me into Melissa's room and lays me down. And she goes, I'm going to fix this and spends an hour doing rehab on my neck and shoulder and I'm just laying on the floor and she's so gentle and she's just quietly working and I'm sitting there and I'd look at her and I'd smile and she'd smile real sweet at me and I'd look at Melissa and I'd be like, I love her. And just being like super creepy. But yeah, Yoshida was the one that gave me vapors. And and to this day, um, she's in, she's 50, 51 now around that age, but still like gorgeous fit, kind and i'll never forget her taking care of me in my first tour of japan so i think that's that's like maybe and maybe that's why um the mickey thing for me is still like i still think she's great i still um i'm really excited that i know that she's she was out with a knee injury she's she's coming back now uh she has her first match uh coming up and i think um i think that's a big part of it is this is something that i really like i was a big fan of somebody that i idolized you know, growing up, somebody that I can distinctly remember watching on television and being like, hell yeah, I love this girl. And then like you said, AK, like I met her and she was still awesome. She was still sweet. Cause there are, you know, they say like, don't meet your heroes. And I had an unfortunate experience where I did meet somebody that I, I really idolized and it just wasn't a good experience. So I feel like every single time that I have seen Mickey or I've been around Mickey, she's always been so great. Um, when we wrestled, she, she was super giving. She was like really excited about the match. She, I don't know, it was, it was just such a good experience that I feel like the little girl in me was like, yay. I mean, but same with Jazz. I know uh, AK, you've also had some really good experiences with Jazz. I think Jazz, like I wish that Jazz still did so much more because she's still so freaking amazing. She still looks better than like oh, half no. the locker room that she goes into. Like I see her and I'm like, I want abs. Like what is going on? Like and, and she's somebody that I, we also got to work with at um, WSU. I actually got to be um, uh, tag team uh, champions with her at WSU. And then, unfortunately, that storyline didn't go anywhere because she ended up moving and then, like, travel. It just became this whole thing. But I can say that I had a match with Jazz. I became WSU tag team champions with Jazz. Um, and she was just always so sweet. She... She's got her amazing uh, Louisiana accent that I love. And she's just, I don't know, like, and I feel like every time you see her, it's like seeing your auntie that you haven't seen in a while, who's just like super happy to see you. And, and, and I think that was also a really, really positive experience, uh, having watched Jazz and then getting to be in a locker room with her and, you know, having car rides with her, just hanging out with her. It was just a really awesome experience. Mm-hmm. That's one match that keeps including me as a singles match with Jazz. I did, I actually had a tag match with her once against her. It was uh, Taylor Maid and I down in FIP, a Florida promotion. It was like a shine weekend and they double booked us. And uh, it was Taylor Maid and I versus Jazz and Awesome Kong. 
of all people. Oh like, what an insane match. And I don't think many mm. people know this match happened because I don't know if it's, I don't know if they posted it anywhere. I don't know if they have any DVDs of it. Um, I think it might actually be on Daily Motion. I'm not sure. I don't know if it's allowed to be, but whoops. Um, <laughs> but I want to watch it back so bad because I don't really remember it. And I'm sure I'll watch it back and rip it apart. But that was the only time I got to be in the ring with her. And, um, you know, I was, that's kind of where uh, the storyline last year in NWA was heading was me versus Jazz. And then that didn't work out. So hopefully in the future it does because that singles match is something that I really want. I never got to work with Jazz. I got to work with Connor, but never Jazz. But she, uh, I always watched her stuff with ECW and she was always real nice to me backstage and whatnot. So she's, she's awesome. I don't feel like when she got the chance to really, really be on the big stage that they gave her what she was worth. Like she was worth so yeah. much more and yeah. she should have been like a top female. And I don't, yeah. I don't think they wrote for her the way they could have and should have. Yeah. They, I mean, she was, um, she was the women's champion at one point, right? I'm pretty sure she was. I, I remember specifically at WrestleMania, one of the WrestleManias, it was her, Victoria, and Trish in a triple threat. Um, that was a good match. I don't remember if she was the champion or not for that so I'm trying to think of, I don't know, because I thought that Alicia Fox was the first ever African-American uh, women's champion, but maybe she was the first Divas champion? I'm not sure. I'm going to look it up right now. No, that's what I literally I'm doing it right now. now. <laughs> because I swear I, I can picture Jazz with the belt. But oh, either way, they yeah, she was a two-time WWE Women's Champion. Okay. So maybe Alicia Fox was the first ever Divas Champion. Maybe so 2002. Right. 2002. Oh my God. <gasps> Is that what? you and her? That's you guys. Nice. Look at <laughs> oh, you. But um, way, they absolutely did not utilize her to her full extent. That's for yes. sure. Yeah, there was definitely a lot missing there. Um, so we're talking about the women that have inspired us, but have you guys ever given any thought to the fact that there are young women coming in now that are going to be looking at you guys as inspiration? You're both world traveled. You both held big titles. You have been on TV consistently. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you're, I don't know if your recording is going to show Marty. And oh, oh <laughs> Marty's like, wait, wait, wait. People are going to look up to me. So it's I so don't know why this is like weird to me. And like whenever anyone tries to like, whenever anyone in a locker room tries to like put me over, I'm just like, I don't know how to accept compliments. But also it's weird. I actually just had a conversation not too long ago with someone um, who is one of my vets. And they were like, well, it's you now. Like you're the one that's going to be the vet in the locker room. And I'm just like, uh, no. Mm -hmm. And then I look around the locker room and I'm like, oh yeah. I, oh. I'm, everyone in this locker room right now is, is, green compared to me or um yeah I just like it's weird I think I'm so used to people using it in a negative connotation too yeah, that I, right. I'm like the word is like touchy to me to be like I'm a vet like I would never self-proclaim myself that way right I, I didn't know I was a vet until Mike Keener told me he goes, yeah like someone else has to tell you he goes you're a vet now you gotta act like it and I go what me no but I think that's also something that um, Allison doesn't realize it, but I think that that's part of what makes you such an amazing locker room leader. I would 100% say that you are our locker room leader at NWA because <laughs> now I wish you could see her face as she's doing, uh, you got to talk to her, it goes back to you. But um, I, I don't know. I think that that's kind of the people that I always gravitated towards uh, to ask for advice and things like that. Like um, in, in, in the locker room, it was usually like, and I know AKU, this is somebody, I feel like I'm stealing your thunder or talking about this, would be like Jessica. Jessica Havoc was somebody that at WSU that I felt like I could go to and I could ask for advice. I could ask her to watch my matches and she would give me her shit of advice, but that was because she wasn't posted at the curtain going, I'm everyone's vet, so respect me. I'm like, that's why I feel like it was so much easier to be, to be comfortable doing that. It's strange. Um, it, it is like such a strange thing when people started yeah, like looking at me for advice or coming to me, even if it was just like hitting me up through DM or, you know, coming up to me at a show and stuff like that, or like, hey, can I get, can we exchange information so I can, you know, and people would like contact me and ask me stuff. And I guess in the, like in our minds, this decade has gone by so fast that it, it doesn't feel like, I still feel like I'm that 21 year old kid that started wrestling. I don't feel like yeah. I'm the last woman who's like, yeah, oh, yeah I, I guess. And, and like you said, Danger, sometimes we we forget things that we've done. And like, 
sometimes I'll go on like YouTube to look for a clip or something that I want to post and I'll type in my name and all these matches come up that I'm like, oh yeah, I did that, huh? Like, I guess because in our mind, something that AK and I have talked about a lot is we always want to get better. There's always, like she said, like you're going to look at a match and tear it apart and somebody's going to look at it and be like, oh my God, like hell yeah, match of the year. And you're like, oh, well actually this and this, but I feel like that's kind of what you never want to be complacent. You never want to just be like, oh, well, you know what? I've been wrestling 10 years, like whatever. Like, no, like you want to yeah. keep it there. You want to keep asking for advice. Mm-hmm. And how, how often have we seen that over the years too, where people have to be reminded, like your, your tenure in wrestling, like just because you've been uh, wrestling for 10 years doesn't necessarily make you like the vet of the locker room because experience does come into play. Mm-hmm. Some people have been in the business, quote unquote, for 10 years, but like they've had only a handful of matches because they're like off and on. And so like your years in wrestling doesn't necessarily make right. you that leader. Yeah. <laughs> and I've not wrestled... everyone's a good leader. Pardon me? Not everyone is a good leader. That no, that's true. Skill. That's very true. Awesome. I feel like there are people that I've wrestled that have, that have been like, yeah, I've been wrestling for 16 years. And I'm like, Oh, but how many matches have you had? Oh, well, I've had, you know, like 10 or 15 matches. I took this and I'm like, oh, I had that many matches within like my first three months of of being a wrestler. So it is, it is crazy. Um, Somebody that I always look up to, and I'm going to put it on the spot, is is AK. I feel like even now, I feel like, no, 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 please, no, no, no. I, even now, like, I run so many things past her or I'll like, whether it's gear, whether it's a storyline, whether it's a day of a show, like, because sometimes you just need to bounce things off people and necessar- not necessarily like you're second guessing yourself, but I don't know, in your mind, something sounds super sweet and then you do it in the ring and it looks like trash. So like, I like to run it past people that I trust and there's nobody in the locker room right now in NWA that I trust more than AK. I've gotten, because I know that she's not going to sugarcoat it and be like, oh yeah, girl, go, go out there and do that thing that you don't know how to do, but I'm sure it's going to be great. And what, and what happens when I don't listen to you? I get dark in my head because I'm like, no, no, it's fine. She's got me. And, the other, and you know, so things like that, I feel like, and just like, there's so much, there's so many little, little things too that I've picked up from AK um, that I, I think uh, continue to inspire me. We met, we realized that we met 10 years ago. Was it, is it 10? I'm really bad at math. It's nine years, almost 10. Nine. It's nine, almost 10. And in those 10 years, you haven't done me wrong, haven't, uh, haven't failed me yet. So I, there's no reason for me to not keep asking you for advice as long as you let me. Well, in female friendships, I think are really important in wrestling. We got to have each other's back. Uh, I know wrestling can be pretty competitive, but you know, when you have that connection with somebody and that friendship like you guys have, and, and, you know, I have with some people like it, it's special and it's precious and you, you got to protect it. And sometimes when the business and the friendship kind of overlap, it can get a little sticky, but you know, I see how well you guys make it work. And one of the harder things about being a vet is sometimes you've got to be the bad guy. You just have to, you have to say something that you don't want it to hurt someone's feelings, but sometimes they need to hear it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, what did you do in that match? Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, you've said that to me before, so. I know. I was grouchy that day. I felt bad, but I, can I tell the story, like kind of go over it real quick? I don't know if Marty knows this, but AK had a match with Kana and I was the one that really, really pushed for that at Shimmer and it didn't go well. And it seemed like there was a little bit of a language barrier. You guys were frustrated and like, I was so hyped because I knew that you could step up to the challenge of her and I wanted you to get put on that map. So when you came back, I, I admit, I raised my voice and I was like, what was that? I expect better from you. And, and shimmer weekends are extremely stressful for me. I don't get much sleep. I usually am sick by the end of the weekend. I'm trying to essentially take care of about 48 people. And I don't think that's an exaggeration of numbers. We are overbooking that locker room, right? <laughs> and, um, but they get really stressful. And when I get my heart set on, oh my God, this person's going to do so good and it doesn't go well, I, I can be a little mean. And, and I acknowledge that and it's something I'm working on. But I, I yelled at you and I know I made you feel bad. And afterwards I was like, man, I got to go talk to you. I got to go talk to you. And I remember talking to you and you're like, no, no, don't, don't apologize. I deserve that. This is going to make me work harder. And I'm like looking at you because usually if I've torn into somebody, they end up saying what a, 
what a douchebag I am backstage and what have I ever done and, and end up bearing me and telling me what a terrible person I am. And, and I'll acknowledge if I do raise my voice, I will always come and apologize if I'm in the wrong. And, but the way you handled it, like impressed me so much and it earned my undying respect for you. And I've always said, you know, you're one of my go-to girls. Like if I'm going to build something, you're one of the first people I'm going to, because I also know you're tough and you're fair and you're strong. And I know if I put you in a leadership role in the back, things are going to get handled the way I need it to get handled. Because now I, you know me, I don't go up to the locker room that much anymore. I'm either at the table or I'm on the stage and I'm running back and forth and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. So I look to you and I look to Nevaeh and stuff like that. I'll pull Nevaeh aside and be like, girl, run it. Just run it, run it how you got to run it. And she'll be like, I got you, mama. And so I know I can depend on you guys because our locker room is pretty young right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the old guard is gone, I think, yeah. with uh, Mercedes Martinez getting signed. You know, she was one of the last members of the old guard. And me and Lexi, when we're there, we're downstairs. Yeah. So I look to you guys to keep running, running that back and making sure everyone's taken care of. It's crazy to think of because I remember like, for us, I, I mean, speaking for myself coming in, I, you know, I did Sparkle and, and that's how I ended up getting on the main show. But I remember like coming in and like picking a little corner and like, it was me and Athena. We, we shared a little, a little area and we'd sit on the floor and like, try to stay out of everybody's way type of thing. And then, you know, as years go by, as years go by, you see, yeah, people start leaving you start realizing like, oh shoot. Like, yeah, like I'm, oh crap. Like there are so many new girls here that I'm like, oh, this is not, this is not the shimmer that it was, you know, 10 years ago or, or eight, well, not, not 10 years. I've only been there for like seven or eight, but it's crazy. It is, it is an interesting shift. And, um, you, you mentioned Lexi. So I, I definitely want to like take a second too to talk about you and Lexi, because I feel like both of you take such good care of us in and out of the ring. It's, you know, well, not in and out, but like in and out of wrestling situations. Um, I, I know that I can count on, on either one of you, if, if I did need something, whether it's wrestling related or not. And I think like Lexi has just, I, I, I met Lexi very, very early on in my career. I would say probably within my first year. And I feel like Lexi is somebody who she's like, that's another one who's like, you guys are like our aunties. You guys are always there. Like your mama danger. And that's mama Lexi. It's a, uh, I know I, I called you aunties and I called you my mom. <laughs> same, 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 but different, you know? And yeah, I, we are your wrestling moms. No, no. You are. Has been it's it's been pretty awesome to have women like you guys around and and yeah having you guys age in our matches and and like and like with AK you know you were tough but fair like you saw that she wasn't doing what she needed to do and it helped her evolve. I learned that from my trainer. I trained with a Johnny Rods in Brooklyn. I remember he would you know we'd be at a show we'd be like a you know first few matches somebody would come to the curtain and he'd be like good job, you know, cool. And I remember watching their match and being like, that match was not good. So like, what are you saying? Good job. And then I would come through and he'd be like, this was bad. This was bad. Work on this, 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 and this, and give me this laundry list of stuff to work on. And I'm like, but you didn't even like tell them any, like, what is going on? Like down to like, you need boots, you need this, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, I don't understand. But then the more you think about it, it's like when you're in high school and your coach is super hard on you because they see something in you and they want you to do better. They don't want you to just be complacent and like super suck and be like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. That's perfect. Then you go out there, you embarrass yourself, embarrass the school, embarrass everybody. So I think it's great when you have people like you and Lexi who will 100% be like, oh no, 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 that wasn't good. Or like, I you made me cry at the last show. You said you were really proud of me. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? I don't want to make like, you good cry. Good tears. The cry baby. Okay, good. Yeah, no, there's, it's not hard. It's always, not hard to make Marty cry. So there's always tears at Shimmer. Oh, but yeah. it was like a good thing. And I feel like when when you hear from somebody like, oh, I'm proud of you, you're like, oh, me? Yeah. I'm always like nine times out of ten, I will cry more likely from something positive than something negative. Yeah. I'm getting old, so you guys make me emotional, Shimmer. Like when I see my babies growing up and I'm like, oh, and then I see you guys on TV, I'm like, that's my babies. Those are mine. I love them so much because I'm a mama and I, I love and I love hard and I love little aggressively sometimes, but 
you know, at the end of the day, my heart's in the right place. And I'm like Johnny Rods. If you come back and I'm just like, yeah, thanks for being here. I don't care. I don't care about you. I Probably don't want to be back again. Huh? Probably won't be back again in the locker room. If, if I have any say, you won't be back. But sometimes Dave Vito is my, they gotta go. Or I'll be like, they really got to go. And sometimes I got to fight him on that. But, you know, sometimes he sees something in somebody else that I don't see. And sometimes I'm a bitter old Karina and we tend to hold grudges. And, you know, so. That's why it's good to have more than one hand in yeah. the yes. Not too many, yes. but it is good to have, you know, someone to, to bounce ideas off of. Right. For that reason. <laughs> yeah. So we, we definitely bounce ideas off. But, and at the end of the day, you know, Dave's, Dave's number one. Like if Dave wants it, I'm going to find a way to make it work and I'm, I'm going to do my best. And, you know, cause being an agent isn't easy. And sometimes you got to give the tough love and sometimes you got to give the tough news. And, but, uh, you know, there's a, there's always a lot of love there. So, yeah, I think, um, I mean, you would have more experience that, with this than I would, but I think for me, it seems like the hard part about being an agent or being a vet in a locker room is it's not so much delivering that it's, um, how they receive it. And if you yes. have someone who just wants to butt heads and not yes. listen, I can only imagine that that day hasn't come for me yet, but I, I'm sure it will at some point if I stick around. So, and I'm <laughs> planning to, so we're just waiting for that day. You're going to call me up and go, what do I do? And I go, well, no. step outside with somebody, take a few deep breaths. <laughs> There's been a few times at Shimmer where uh, I've gotten pulled outside because you can just see like my face is turning Same. red and I've got balls of you know, my fists are all balled up and I'm like, oh no, I gotta be good. I gotta behave. You know? She turns into that Arthur meme. She's got like her fist balled up and they're like, all right, we gotta go. Yeah. That's a good well, second. There, there's been a couple of times at, at Shimmer where, you know, but it was Soraya Knight looks at me and she goes, Bird, I know you. I know you well. We need to take a walk. And I go, yes, ma'am. And I just <laughs> go for a walk, relax and be like, I can't control everybody. You know, because I have to translate Dave's vision into things. And if I give you, you guys are in a match and I give you what I need to have and you guys don't do it, I'm the one that's got to go explain to Dave why it's not there. Yeah. Or whenever I age it, I got to go explain why this didn't happen. Yeah. And it's, well, did I not tell you guys properly? Did you guys just ignore me? Sometimes it's miscommunication. Sometimes things happen in the ring where you guys got to change stuff on the fly. And, and that's what happens. You know, somebody gets hurt. You know, we got we to gotta step up and change things real quick. And then there's some people that just plain don't want to listen. And those are the ones that I find don't always survive long in wrestling. Or they survive long, but they never work. If we're, if we're lucky, they will bury themselves and we don't have to deal with it. <laughs> Sometimes when I see something happen and I'm just like, mm, take the wheel, take the wheel, Jesus. And I'm not, you know, I'm not a Jesus girl, but I will literally, when you hear me in the back going, Jesus, take the wheel, you know, Woo! some stuff is about to happen. And I just have to wait. I just have to tell myself, it's going to happen. They're going to bury themselves. Let's just, yeah, you just breathe it out, breathe it out. So, well, ladies, this has been wonderful. I love you both so much. I miss you both so much. I really need people to wash their hands, wear their masks, stay inside. So I can get back to y'all. Yes, because thank you. I, I need my AK and Marty fix and not just on Instagram, but I yeah. stalk you to there because <laughs> I love your pictures and I love all your makeup. And I'm always wanting to message you guys and be like, how do I do that? How do I make that work? So what I'm going to do, ladies, is uh, Marty, since we started with you, I'm going to give you the floor. Take a moment to tell us anything you got coming up, any social media you want to share. Hit up them Patreons. All three of us got them. Your twos is much better than mine, but mine will build. Mine is slow, steady, full of recipes. So Marty, go ahead. Well, I have, um, I do have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Marty Bell. Um, AK and I actually just did some fire shoots that are going to be coming up there over the next few weeks. Ooh. Uh, it's going to be really fun. We did, uh, we did uh, some really cool things together. So you can find that. Um, you can find me on Instagram. That's the social media that I use the most. AK will tell you, I barely use Twitter, uh, but uh, Twitter uh, twitter.com slash Marty Bell, uh, Instagram.com slash Marty dot Bell. 
<laughs> with an E at the end. There is it's B E L L E. Uh, yeah, but uh, subscribe to my Patreon, y'all. Yeah, yeah, I do happen to use Twitter a lot, actually. I'm either tweeting things that I think are funny or like punchlines that I think are funny or I'm tweeting um, information about consent, things like that, things that I think are important. Um, and also on Instagram, they're both just at Sienna right now, which I want to change every single day. And I almost did it the other weekend. But because there are so many fake accounts trying to ask people for money, I didn't want to lose my verification right now because I know that Twitter is not accepting new, they have some message that they're not accepting new um, verification, like the little blue badge uh, submissions. So I'm just like, you know what, I'm just going to leave it. It hopefully will prevent some people from getting scammed. Somebody claimed that they got scammed by one of my fake accounts. And I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. I have a check mark. But anyway, yes. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going on a tangent. But no, can we for a second just talk about that? Please don't, if some random page that has five followers hits you up and says that they're any person, anybody, myself, AK, danger, anybody. I know Savoy has had this happen a lot too. Um, we're not going to ask you for money. Like, we're not going to tell you to cash app us or PayPal us. If you want to spend money, go to our Patreons or, you know, buy merch. Yes. Do that, please. Like, Please we will that. never, we will never just be like, send me money. Like yeah. we have things set up where you can give us money in exchange for merchandise or content. So yes. that, but anywho, <laughs> that's my thing now. I just say anywho now. Never mind. <laughs> that's a side note. That's a side note Marty and I talked about the other day. I'm sorry. This is a whole tangent. At Sienna is my Instagram and my Twitter. And I have patreon.com slash Allison K because I wrestle with Allison K and never Sienna ever again. So the, the name will be changed soon. But my mom calls her Sienna, so that's really oh, fun. Geez. And people call me Sienna to get under my skin, too. We're, that's, a, that's a podcast for another day. Um, I was going to say something about Patreon, but I forgot what it was. But yes, we have content coming up together soon. Um, and yeah, that's that. I'm going to stop my tangent now. Oh, I love it. I love it. Did you give me a little Shazza? A little Shazza right I don't know what Shazza, I guess. Ah, uh, I love her. <laughs> She's so sweet. So before I end this, I just want to take a second to dedicate this very first episode to a very special young man who's no longer with us. We lost him approximately six years ago when this comes out. And this episode, the very first episode of Women's History with Alice in Danger is dedicated to Cameron. And I always promised your cousin that we would never forget you. People, pediatric cancer, it's a thing. September will be pediatric cancer awareness. Please, if you are in the position to donate, go through St. Baldrick's, do what you gotta do. Um, kids are dying every day and there needs to, we need a cure. We need to find something. We need to support these families that have children going through it, but I'm sending my gold balloon up to the sky in honor of Cameron. He is still very loved, very in our hearts. And that's where I'm gonna leave it with that. Allison Kay, Marty Bell, I love you. I miss you. Thank you so very much for being a part of this. I appreciate you guys and can't wait to see you soon. Thank you for having us. We are honored to be your first episode. Yay! Mwah, you guys so are beautiful. Love you guys. Love you guys. Stay classy.